Okay, here we go. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Rene Russo with me. Rene helps business leaders master the skills, tools, and disciplines they need to break through the ceiling and get what they want from their business. She's a certified EOS implementer, keynote speaker, and global coach of EOS implementers. She's obsessed with doing business better and changing the lives of others. Rene, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Michael. Good to be here. I love this because uh, my uh, EOS, uh, for those that don't know, stands for Entrepreneur Operating System, and my company runs on EOS as well. So I love that. (laughs) Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, Let's dive right in here. Question number one, Renee, why did you become a coach? Um, I've always had the desire to help other people, and I haven't always known exactly how to do that. So becoming a coach just gives me a little bit more of a structured environment, structured tools and a relationship with people that we can really get in and do uh, meaningful work to affect change. Looking to have a positive effect on the people that I encounter in life and help them work through and navigate their challenges. And coaching is the perfect platform for me to do that. I love that. Question number two, uh, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? I primarily work at the organizational level, which I feel like the, a lot of the coaching that I experienced previously was a lot of one-on-one. And what we I saw through that was that I wasn't then able to necessarily manifest or architect my environment to then be able to show up as my best self in that mm-hmm. space, though I had done a lot of the work myself. So uh, as an EOS implementer, I work with the leadership team to not just coach, but teach and facilitate that leadership group, get them all playing by the same set of rules and foundations in the business, help them level up as leaders, and then teach those tools and disciplines down so that they then become the coach of coaches in their business. I also do one-on-one executive coaching with the leadership level um, in, on, a, on a needs basis. And then when they have the playbook in place, they're able to really do amazing work in not just the organization uh, but also in their lives that's great so affecting affecting change on multiple levels Mm -hmm. question number three where do you find your clients uh, right now, at this point in my career, it's 100% by referral. So my clients have had such a transformative experience in their business and in their lives. And then they tell everybody else about me. Uh, and to the point where some of their network feel like they're a little strange, like, why are you so obsessed with Renee Russo? Um, but they've just had such uh, I coach in a very abundance uh, minded way. And, and that then translates down to them. So they share it with their network. Initially, a ton of conversations, like 200 conversations would weed out 10 viable opportunities. Uh, mm-hmm. And in, in presenting the actual format to those 10, I'd likely get one client. So initially, a whole ton of conversations, now raving fan clients. That's great. That's great. Good progression. Question mm-hmm. number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? Patience. I'm sorry, patience? Patience. Yeah, so... Um, I often see the light in others before they see it in themselves. I often see the potential of what they can do with tools and disciplines. Um, what I have learned is that I can tell them all I want, but the role of a coach is to help them discover it themselves. And so really, even though they know what they want to achieve, actually helping to teach the tools and disciplines, most importantly, the disciplines that Mm -hmm. over time generate the results they want and help them reach their full potential. So the patience of sticking to disciplines and supporting Mm -hmm. them in that process um, has then allowed them to unlock whole new levels of potential. So my greatest obstacle is being patient enough for them to realize what I saw in them from the beginning. That's great. I think that's a, a big one that I hear echoed on this podcast frequently because as someone figures it out for themselves, they're just going to own it. They're going to have a lot more equity in that in that realization. Yeah, Not I say it. to people like uh, leaders and other coaches, you know, you can tie the shoelaces for your team 
for the rest of their life. But as soon as you stop doing that, then they're going to start tripping up. So what we want to do is teach them to tie their own shoelaces so that they don't trip up for the rest of their life. Got to teach them how to fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's great. Question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? Um, I, If I had a do-over, I would learn the art of identifying readiness mm-hmm. and diagnosing readiness a lot earlier uh, because A plus B doesn't always equal C or one plus one does not always equal two. So I realized in human psychology, in my work is very much aligning human energy, creating the disciplines to execute on that. So I've learned that if a person or a team is not in that place of readiness, realizing that they are capable of more than they are, uh, feeling worthy of it and willing to stick to certain disciplines, um, if they're not at that place of readiness, there's not much I can really do as the coach. And I didn't understand the identification of readiness early in my career. So if I could go back and understand that, I probably would have had even more <laughs> success uh, earlier on. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, now for the bonus question, what is one book that you recommend all your clients read? I bet I know what it is. <laughs> I think you know what it is. <laughs> you know, I'm all about execution. And, and I'm like, I don't have a lot of time for reading books about theory. Uh, my brain says, okay, now what? What are we going to do to affect the change? And not just in how I behave, but how we all play in either the game of life, any organizations we're part of, or any businesses that we're connected to. And I really feel that we need a common playbook, a set of rules, kind of like playing Monopoly without the rule book and everybody's just playing by their own rules. We know that doesn't go very well and you certainly don't go very far. And same in business and in life, you can use the same tools in life or any organization, even a not-for-profit or a school you're part of, we need a playbook. One that is less is more simple tools and disciplines that everybody can play by. And that is Captured in the Book Traction by Gina (laughs) Wickham. So that it would be the book that I would say, yes, learn how to be a great person in the world, leader and communicator. But in terms of a playbook, this is the one that I know and trust. I love that you, uh, so this is this is an audio podcast, but I, for those oh, yeah. that- I didn't know if it was gonna be recorded all, but yeah. For those that are listening, Renee had the book queued up on her desk and she busted <laughs> it out. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm all about tactile objects. That's fantastic. I've got the book. I've got the book down here on the floor right next to my desk. But yeah, <laughs> it's a good one. Um, so that, that's great. Renee, is there anything else that you would like to add or, or pitch or promote? And if you would let us know where people can connect with you online, that'd be great. Yeah, so I'm online on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook and Instagram at Renee Russo EOS. So Renee with two E's, double S-O for Russo. Um, and I also have a website, riseupbc.com. The, the thing that I want to leave everybody with is a contemplation around, you know, challenging and interrogating your reality. Uh, asking yourself what limiting ideas you're entertaining. And that's from a book, Limitless, that I'm reading. But my my mantra and, and saying that I really um, abide by is that the only difference between those who do and those who don't is those who believe they can. But we just need to come to a place of believing in our potential um, then we can do what we want in life, uh, professionally, personally, in relationships. Uh, but as soon as we doubt ourselves or have any level of lack of belief in what we're capable of, in reality, we will never reach our full potential. That's Wonderful. It. Thank you for that, Renee. Thank you for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. We will see you next time.